Test, test. I think we got all the little humans up here. What'd you say? Yeah, not Harper. You gotta work on that. Harper to come up. Harper, 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 Harper. I need to do it. I need to do it. All right, how's everybody's week? Good. good. Was looking pretty good this week. Very nice, very nice. Anything special happened this week? Nope. Oh, you got something special? What happened to you this week? Um, Mom sent us a box for Easter. Ooh, very nice. Mom sent a box. I got six Easter chocolate eggs today. Six Easter chocolate eggs today? Nice. Were they those big ones? Little, like those tiny ones? Very cool. We got our new couch. You got a new couch? Sweet. Does it have a footstool? Does it come out? L-shaped. Nice. <laughs> what do you have happened this week, Sage? Skylar charged my watch. Ooh, Skylar got your watch charged? Where's Skylar? Yes, very good. What happened this week, boys? What <laughs> Um, I didn't wish you what I ate until my cream. That is awesome. Glad to have, it was a good week. Our, oh, what'd you have happen? I got three huge peeps at school. Three huge peeps? They didn't make it home. They must have stayed at, uh, did they stay at school? You ate them. They stayed in your tummy. That's a good place for them. All right. Uh... Let's see. What's my question I ask every single Wednesday? Wednesday. How have you been the head and feet of Jesus? Hey. How have you been the head and feet of Jesus? Oh, we got some hands in the back row. Very nice. Two by you. No, that was not. Oh. Okay, this isn't me, but Brian on Saturday, he gives to the poor so much that he accidentally tipped somebody. Really? Ryan? Brian. Oh, Brian Laird. Good way to be the hands and feet of Jesus, Brian. Very good. No. Oh, here. I helped move the couches into the trailer in the back of the suburban to bring it here. Oh, nice. Help dad out to lift, huh? Very cool. I helped a friend at school because he, he didn't get math, and I helped a friend at school because um, she felt sad, and I helped clean up the whole house. Very good. That was a lot. Holy cow. Busy week. I helped move the new couch in. I helped a friend that was alone, and I helped clean up the house. And I helped another friend, two friends that can join with us. Oh, you included people into your group? Very good. 
Angie helped Sage hook up her watch. You guys got something? Um, the hands of free, I hands of free. Jesus, help mom. Very good, that's awesome. How are you the hands and feet? I'm watching a movie and I clean up. <laughs> you guys cleaned up and helped mom. Outstanding, that's awesome. How are you the hands and feet? Um, um, I've been sleeping actually the house for eight, for, for, I've been sleeping there. You've been sleeping? That's good. I wish kids in my house would sleep once in a while. My Papa Joe's shoes got holes. <laughs> okay. Yes, they did. How are you the hands and feet, Hannah? No. Okay. I made dinner. You made dinner? Well, you know my question I have to follow up with. Um, I made honey garlic chicken. Honey garlic chicken. I'm just saying your brother brought me some last time he cooked, so that sounds awesome. Very good, guys. I'm very impressed. Do you guys had hands? Sorry. No, that's Sage. Oh, Sage. Sorry. I got new shoes. Okay, you got new shoes, so you can definitely be the feet of Jesus here shortly, right? Very cool. You guys, oh, uh, you're not Hannah. Riley. I made dinner, too. You made dinner, too? I made tacos. Tacos. Very good. Did you have your hand up? Oh, waving at Nate. That'll get you in trouble up here, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Elena made dinner tonight, too. Elena made dinner tonight. Tacos. Tacos! Man, that is the thing. Very great job, guys. Very impressed. Would you like to sing? Yeah. yeah, let's do that. Blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven. What I can see when the Lord is living in me. I know that Jesus is well and alive today. You know. God and my salvation be so um, you know the Lord come on and bless be the rock and let God and my salvation be so here I will call upon the Lord um, you guys remember that song I taught last week what did I say? Are, are we perfect people? No. Were the people behind you and your parents perfect? No. But that doesn't mean we still get disciplined once in a while, right? We still need to try the best we can be. But we're not here to be perfect. That's what Jesus is, all, is for, right? He comes and helps us out and covers us and helps us on our journey. And that's what this song helps us remember. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. 
It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. You know that he's still working on me to make me took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, cause he's still working on me. He's still working on me. I'm telling you, he is super patient, especially with me. Woo, I'm a doozy for him sometimes. Do you guys have any prayer requests for Mr. Rod? Help mom feel better alone. Skylar says help mom to feel better when she's alone. To help grandma and grandpa have a safe trip back to Montana yeah. and help <laughs> Brody's purple lip to go away. Brody's got a purple lip? How do you get a purple lip? Nobody knows, huh? Uh huh. What well, what did you have? I was gonna say, uh, have grandma and grandpa have a good trip home. <laughs> Thank you for repeating that, cause you can never pray too much about that. Um, help grandma Paula. Help grandma Paula. What you got? Me and Aston and Skylo and Haven and me draw pictures for mom. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, sir. A pair of thankfulness for recovering from my ear infection. Oh, very good. Very good. You hear? Can you you hear? Nice. What do you do you guys have a prayer request? What you got? I go. You think about it. What you got? Rawr. Oh Rars. We have energy, so that's something to be prayer or thankful for. Good evening. Hello. Oops. Did I throw something? No. Okay. Good to see everybody. Um, and also the folks we can see, welcome online. Uh, you can fill in a visitor form online at billingschurch.org if you'd like to. Um, let's have a few announcements here. Well, I guess more than we've had the last few weeks anyway. Um, Suggestions for, for elders due no later than tomorrow. That's the cutoff tomorrow. Um, and we need a volunteer to take the month of April to set up communion, which starts tomorrow, but I guess Sunday. So you've got a few days for that. So if you'd like to sign up uh, for April communion uh, preparation, we'd appreciate that. Um, we do appreciate also what Gay and Richard have done in, in keeping the church building clean for the last couple of months. Um, because of commitments at camp, uh, Rich has to step down and they won't be able to do that anymore. So we'd, look, we, we'd like somebody to replace them and uh, pick up that uh, responsibility, that um, uh, privilege, joy, to clean the building. Um, Please let Michael Noble know, or uh, even Craig or Cindy. There's another name here, but doesn't need to be on here. <laughs> um, then uh, we did send out a, a, a brief survey a short while ago about um, adding Bible classes and then wanting to know when maybe the best time would be to start, whether 8.30 with Bible class and 9.30 or 9 and 10 or... 9.30 and 10.30, so still a little bit of time, a couple of days to, to fill that in. If you haven't done that, if you'd like to let us uh, have any input on that. And there's also an opportunity to make comments if you'd like to uh, connect it to that. Then uh, in about in three weeks' time, April 21st, we'll see the beginning of an online-only Wednesday evening class when this class will no longer be streamed. So in th we're starting that in three weeks' time. Uh, this class here 
on site will remain on site and the Zoom class is the format that the online class will, will have and that it will be taught by Art Booth. So we're grateful to him for stepping in and wanting to do that. So for those folks online, in three weeks time, this section of our assembly will be streamed still, the songs that we're singing and the announcements and the prayer time. And when this is done, we will stop the stream from here and uh, you can connect online to the Zoom class. If you have any questions, get a hold of Craig on that. Definitely Craig and only Craig uh, for information on that. Um, and then the Thursday morning breakfast has been continuing with a few faithful uh, men who've wanted to keep that uh, going. Um, but it's, it is worth noting or, or announcing that that is still going and, and it's, you know, of course, open to everybody who'd like to join 7 a.m. Thursday morning at the, uh, at the Emporium on King. Um, you're welcome to join that. Then uh, in prayer requests, um, Ruby Ford has, has had the uh, cell transplant, stem cell transplant. Uh, we do continue to pray um, for her protection and health because of the uh, immune system situation and just, just healing and, and wellness from the, the treatment. Um, Taya, Lyle's sister, has a, the unfortunate recent diagnosis of osteoporosis, so we're looking for you know, her getting sound advice from the medical personnel on, on how to deal with that and, and, and getting good treatment and, and, and being able to live with that. Uh, as well as possible. Uh, then the Labards, ex-members here who are now in Florida, have requested prayer for uh, a, a friend of theirs down in, in Florida, Kim Story. Um, he's had some uh, surgery recently and, and just uh, needs some prayer for that and, and his walk. So we, we want to pray for him also, Kim Story, uh, friends of the Labards down in, in Florida. Uh, any other requests or announcements? All right, let's pray. Loving Father, thank you for uh, being attentive to us again now. Gracious God, uh, Creator, it's uh, an encouragement to know that as, as able as you are, as powerful as you are, you want to hear us. Righteous Judge, Thank you that in Jesus we can approach your throne of grace because our sin problem is taken care of. Healer, physician, we're grateful that we can uh, call on you in the name of Jesus and, and know that you will heal according to your will and in your way. And, and so we pray for those who have medical needs, physical medical needs. We pray for those who have emotional and psychological needs. Uh, we, we pray for those who, who have uh, financial uh, struggles and uh, relationship problems. We ask for you to, to be powerfully involved in these situations, to, to guide the medical personnel, to, uh, to guide decisions that we make concerning our finances or relationships or whatever the situation might be. Lord, you have the answers. Your word is full of, of sound counsel, truth, on how we ought to live. Lord, point us there, and may we as, as Christians, as your children, help each other and remind each other, and also take your word, your sound counsel to the world. Um, Lord, we do pray for those who are away from family now in, in different ways, uh, those uh, down south, um, those traveling for work. Um, please bring them back home safely, Lord, and, and, and encourage and strengthen. Um, Guide us, Lord, in our class here tonight. Help us to uh, learn, help us to grow, help us to allow you to change us. Um, thankful for opportunity. We are thankful for opportunities to serve. And so we ask you to, to keep reminding us of that, Lord, that we would, where it might be a risk, get out of comfort zones and, and be willing to um, do what needs to be done so that we wouldn't focus so much on our comfort or what's easy that we'd be willing, like you showed us, 
to, to serve and to, to do and to act for, for the sake of others, for others' well-being. Use us to do that, Lord. Teach us about that tonight. Um, and again, we ask for your protection that we, as we go home later, keep us safe through the rest of this week and use us in your kingdom. Uh, we pray in the name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. All right, teachers are dismissed. And children too. All right, this is the uh, last uh, in the series on uh, non-COVID lessons. Um, uh, again, it'll be a, a simple lesson, nothing deep or profound, just, you know, we're just looking for useful or, or practical perspective on, on how to live and what we can gain from what's going on around us. and, and uh, just to be an encouragement to each other on this journey we call the Christian life. Um, there is really so much to be thankful for. And I guess thankful for COVID per se might not be <laughs> the best way we want to go or that we would th maybe automatically think, but there is a lot to be grateful for. Um, yes, I am grateful for coffee, although that's not the main emphasis of, <laughs> of that image. The, you can't see it, but it says on the cup there, my cup runneth over. And that's really what the, what the emphasis is on in that picture. God has given us what we need, but so much more also. Our cup runs over. We have far more than we deserve, and God has displayed his goodness uh, over and over and continues to do so faithfully. And so... We, there might just be a few things we can look at and, and, and focus on in terms of gratitude, thankfulness um, that we can gain, which we didn't need COVID for again. You know, as Christians, these are things that should, should be plain, should be before us always, but uh, maybe just something we can, we can pull out here. Um, again, there'll be a little bit of overlap, but, it, but the focus is on the thankfulness as opposed to other things that, uh, that I'd mentioned before. So... Um, Couple of things here. Firstly, um, creation can recover, or some people might say nature can recover. But God's creation has this remarkable ability to improve. And we'd mentioned, for instance, pollution. Uh, those space photographs of pollution reducing in places where where there was less activity, particularly less um, industrial activity. Um, but water sources have improved, rivers, uh, you know, lakes have improved, have, have cleaned up. Um, and although it's been much longer than COVID, the, the Chernobyl disaster site continues to recover. It's been, I guess, 30 plus years by now. But uh, it's remarkable how plants are growing there and animals have returned and, you know, animals that they hadn't seen for such a long time are, are coming to the area. And uh, apparently the radiation in the area reduced fairly fast, <coughs> excuse me. So as we look at that, we, we notice that God's creation has a, a remarkable ability. It's, it's robust, it's strong, it's powerful, uh, has a remarkable ability to recover. And I'm thankful for that. And there are lessons to be learned from that. What do we learn from God's creation being able to recover when circumstances change, when left to do that. What, what are some things we, we might learn? Just a, just a word here or there, anything? I think of things like, um, yes, ma'am, there we go. Hot forest fire, thank you. You have to have a really hot forest fire to have a large pole pine pine cone pop open and then the seeds are dispersed. It's the yeah. only way it'll happen. Right, so that's a design that that God has, and so yeah, we try to fight fires, and with good reason, um, in, in certain areas. But but fire has its 
has its uh, place, right? What's the what's the Greek word for fire? And what English word do we get from that? Pyro. Yeah, well, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. We should ask our Greek scholar here. Uh, pure, I guess, uh, fire. Pyro comes from that for s for sure. Uh, pure. You know, fire has a has a purifying effect. Um, the the ashes of of a of a fire are considered pure and clean. They can, and there's you know application of of that. Um, so yeah, that's that's by God's design. When we mess with things like we have in terms of pollution and all, it's good to see what God has created being able to be restored. So that gives us this, a sense of God's uh, power. I would think. Um, it also one of the other things I think that at least that I learned from that is, is or get from that is hope. There's, there's always hope for restoration. And it's, it's for here in this world and for what lies ahead. If what God has done here, even though messed with and damaged in some ways, not well managed, left again under the different circumstances, is able to restore, then that points me to, to, to what God has done and what his ultimate um, uh, point is. To, you know, it also looks points me to the sovereignty of God. Um, then, uh, apart from creation, secondly, also, I'm really thankful for what I can see in our, in our body's abilities to recover. Um, of course, there are limits to the type and extent of healing, depending on, on what kind of damage we've sustained. Um, but I'm thankful that we are, what, fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, the way God's created us, the, the amount of, of, of design that has gone into what we can do. Uh, connected to that, and I'm going to read something uh, shortly from an, uh, an article here. Um, connected to that is that uh, God has given us really useful, helpful information in his word, in the Bible, for how to live. Uh, right at the beginning, for instance... Uh, he emphasized that we should eat plant-based foods, r r just right at the beginning. And today, these still provide the, the basic foundational nutrients we need for optimal health. We, c we would say that if we have just plant-based foods and nothing else, we can actually survive quite well. When he introduced meat, he did it within certain limitations. There were some things that were excluded and some things that were included. And interestingly, those, that initial list of, of good stuff meat, <laughs> that's a technical term, good stuff meat, is, um, is, is still the best list of meats that if we're going to consume, we should, that we should have. There's stuff that was left outside of that, that later God said, that's okay, it's fine, you can eat that. But that stuff is still more prone to causing problems and troubles with us. So just in passing then, or maybe not in passing, but deliberately, it's interesting to note, to note that while it's not proven beyond a doubt, the main suspect of this COVID virus at this point still is some sort of zootic, I think they call it, uh, um, transferring, uh, trans transferal of, uh, from, from animal to, to human. Uh, probably... Um, you know, eating, ingesting, messing with um, these animals we were supposed to leave alone. Eric? Zoonotic, thank you. I appreciate that. Zoonotic. So uh, I thought I had that written down and my eyes are not that great anymore, it turns out. So uh, couldn't find it. Zoonotic, thanks very much. Bill? In a few weeks, that'll be done, right? We I, I have a firm belief that a beefsteak is the original and greatest uh, natural food that's all plant-based. <laughs> Originally. Because that's what they eat, so get off that stuff. Right, right. Yes, indeed. Indeed, its foundational origin is plant-based. No argument there. Um, so... So it's interesting then that this virus that's messed with the whole world might have come from, from this list of never ever eat this stuff. Uh, 
in the original list. So, but thankfully, again, we have access to God's uh, wisdom uh, for other things also, like, uh, you know, washing hands under running water, and, you know, we've been through uh, a certain list of these things also. Now, why am I raising that again? Why is that significant? It's because this ancient text, outdated, you know, old-fashioned, not applicable anymore, actually has so much good information for us. And so, when we get to speak to people under any conditions, even among ourselves, you know, as Christians who are believers, who think that this word is sound and true, we have the opportunity to encourage each other with something that is true and right and good and time-tested and unfailing. And I'm thankful for that, this standard, unchanging word. But beyond that, we have the opportunity to speak to those who are skeptical, maybe, somebody who's not yet believed the word. We have the opportunity to take what was written many, many years ago and point to things today, the applicability of the word, the relevance of the word, the accuracy of the word. And so it's a, when we come across difficult times, disasters we might say, hardships, uh, when the results are of our mm, ill-advised decisions become plain, we can come back to, in that context in particular, we can come back to something that is sound, and I'm thankful for that. To be able to compare worldly thinking, worldly things, and look again at what God has done, what God has said, and what God aims for and what he calls us to. Um, so just briefly, because on the one hand, is some of this is, uh, yeah, I guess most of it, or all of it maybe is known to us, but it's, it's, it's good by way of reminder, again, to, to look at stuff. Um, I just want to point out a few things uh, from here. This actually came off uh, the uh, AARP website. So it's not because I feel the need to spend much time on the AARP website. It's just that that's where this material happened to be, <laughs> where this link took me. So it's not, not so much, you know, because I needed it, but I think it's, it's good for all of us. And uh, uh, me thinks... You might think I'm protesting too much, maybe, but um, I just thought I'd throw that disclaimer out there. Just came across this. Um, it's written by a medical doctor um, with, uh, according to her, some uh, Julie K. Silver, some, some good experience in, in her own life, but also the kind of stuff that she's done in, in trying to bring healing to people, um, psychological and physical healing. And so she... Uh, talks about a, a, a real estate agent who, who had a heart attack. His, his heart stopped on a plane. He was resuscitated, thankfully, and then got full recovery. Um, it wasn't really expected, but because of the regime of things that he did, his body was able to heal. His heart was able to heal. And this is the th part that struck me, is he went back to his highly, success, whoops, highly successful Boston uh, uh, real estate uh, development um, business as an 80-year-old. That's when he had the heart attack. And he recovered as an 80-year-old and went back to work. He got, his, uh, he got you know, healthy again. So how was he able to do that? She says his body's natural healing process did most of the work. Um, and that's how God's created us, right? He, we just have this ability to recover when we give our body, as she says, the right conditions. What are the right conditions to be able to do that? And so, again, God has, has input for us on that. Um, the steps that she uses and that other folks have used, uh, you know, are linked to scientific research, but they will back up fundamentals, not that this is a medical um, document, but it'll, it'll back up, it won't contradict the things that God's talking about. So... Um, uh, she says, y your body will work hard on its own to help you recover, even if you do little to help the process along. And again, that's testimony to go how God has made us. Of course, if we help it along, it go goes a lot better. Um, there are thousands of chemical and bio biological re uh, reactions that occur night and day to help us. So white blood cells, this was new to me. I just called them white blood cells. Um, she says, when we're injured, white blood cells called neutrophils. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it looks like yeah, neutrophils rush to a site to ward off infection. Um, 
Other blood cells called monocytes transform themselves into scavengers, apparently, uh, good scavengers called macrophages that engulf and devour dead tissue and help control inflammation. So the body's getting there, breaking down the inflammation and then taking it away. I, um, that's, a, I guess, what physiotherapy does, right? When you tear a muscle, physiotherapy gently works to break down the scar tissue so that your body can remove the scarring and your, body, your, your muscles can heal again. Now, if you break a bone, these bone cells called osteo osteoblasts kick in and, and knit together the rough edges, and so it goes. This is how God has created us. Um, now, even though these processes are involuntary and automatic, because by design, smart patients can do things to speed up and strengthen recovery. The best healing occurs when we optimize our immune system. And so, what does that mean, optimizing our immune system? Um, she talks about an eight-part strategy, but three things that are key, basic things. How we eat, how we sleep, and how we move. We've got to eat enough, I mean, eat well enough, eat well, sleep enough, and, and, and be active. And so, um, she calls inadequate nutrition, conversely, she calls inadequate nutrition and lousy sleep patterns and physical deconditioning the triple threat to optimal healing. And so, uh, you know, we, we can aid or interfere with our body's natural processes. Um, Yeah, the, the carbohydrates, one of the things that I found interesting is she specifies, and of course this information is out there, that uh, it's useful to find foods with a, uh, in carbohydrates specifically with a low glycemic index, um, things that will break down into sugar slowly rather than fast. And, and so a, a, a glycemic index of below 55 is really what's looked uh, useful. Uh, and then this is one of the things that stuck out for me. Proteins are... Uh, the building block of cell repair, and they provide energy as well. And so this is where Bill's meat comes in, maybe, sort of. She says, plant-based proteins, such as beans and nuts, have some advantages over animal proteins, especially uh, for patients who don't yet have a lot of appetite because of their cell repairing uh, properties. Uh, plant-based proteins provide phytochemicals that can help with... Uh, healing and fiber. Of course, these uh, a steer that has eaten good grass would, would have good meat, right? <laughs> I see you itching to say something else. <laughs> yeah, right. For the online community, Bill has this insight, deep insight, that eating vegetables may not live us, may let us live longer, but it might just seem like it. All right, so there's, there's more to be said here. Um, it just, again, God has, has created us in a way that's useful, uh, that, that's effective when we, as much as possible, uh, work with our bodies to provide the environment in which it can be healthy. And, and so the, the recovery part is what we're focusing on. We have a remarkable ability to recover. So a lot of people are getting long-term damage from COVID, and it's a, it's a tragic result. It's a tragic um, consequence, right? And so we're... There is a way that we can mitigate some of these damaging effects, you know, with with our nutrition and and, and with sleep and and with um, uh, appropriate exercise and movement, so that we we activate our body as, as much as possible uh, to find healing. Um, yeah, this. Let's just get to this one. Um, we've also touched on the negative effects of isolation. We need to be together. Oh, that screen fell asleep. Anyway, there's supposed to... There we go. <laughs> this is a high-tech uh, slideshow here. That's all, just togetherness. Um, we, um, so, 
we mentioned before, you know, those babies dying in orphanages and hospitals because they weren't touched, you know, some ignorance around that, and somebody discovered that you just hold them, the survival rate shoots up. You know, for us too, we, we felt this. It just, we've been able to call and text, but it's not the same, right? There's something about being together, something about spending time together, and even eating healthy salads together that'll optimize our, our, our health emotionally and physically. So um, yeah, we look forward to the time when we can be together again, uh, spending meaningful time with humans. The thing is that we can spend time with people also that's uh, maybe toxic, that is also damaging. You know, whether we're, if we're isolated from people or if the kinds of interactions we have are, are damaging or hurtful or harmful, that's not good either. So we need good, sound interactions with each other for emotional health and physical health and psychological health. So uh, I'm thankful, therefore, for God's word, which helps us know how to do this well. Because, you know, one of the things we've found is that there are there basically, I guess, generally speaking, two groups, right, with this thing. You know, we should wear masks or we shouldn't. We should be vaccinated. We shouldn't be vaccinated. We, you know, all of these things. Now, and, and there's some some trouble that we've seen in the world out there you know the the articles we read the news things we see but god has showed us how to how to do this how to navigate this stuff consider others as more important he gives us the guidelines i'm thankful for god's word to help us as his people navigate these difficult things you know what is primary my opinion on an issue or or a god-honoring relationship these things get tested, right? And it's, it's one thing when everybody's getting on and we're, we're sitting in a class and, and talking about things and talking about the, how, how applicable the scripture is and how accurate that is. It's another thing when we find ourselves with different opinions now having to apply this. So we want to keep praying for each other and helping each other and finding in here these, these principles. I'm thankful that we have the information where we can be united in purpose, where we can live a life that embodies what God has in mind for us, to, to be uh, united in the purposes that God has, to get a, a, a message out there that people will listen to, that people see, because they notice that there's something about Christians that is different, that, that's distinct from what's going on in the world. There's, there's, a, there's a kind of light it doesn't exist in the world. There's, there's kindness. There's togetherness. There's forgiveness. There's mercy. There's grace among God's people. And that's attractive, especially when there's strife. If there's anything we can do to attract people to God's message, to, to something bigger and better, to something beyond the difficulty that this season is causing, then it lies with us to do that. We have the information. We have the guidelines to, to do that. And so, um, um, I want to make uh, one sort of bigger application still in, in the season we're in, not the COVID season, another season, uh, which we'll do now. But are there any, I, I, it just struck me, I've been waffling long and hard without giving much opportunity to speak or ask questions. Thanks for those of you who've jumped in to do it. Is there anything from online, any comments? Nope, all right. So then, what season are we in? in most of the world recognizes this time of year. Spring, okay, not where I was going, but yes, spring. I think I heard somebody else. Easter, right. Passover, uh, Easter. Um, Jesus went to the cross uh, to accomplish the Father's plan, even though in the flesh he didn't want to do that. You know, he, he discussed this with God. That flesh part, that human part of him, was a little reluctant. Uh, similarly, as Christians, we, if we understand what it means that we have died to self, can therefore live 
before the Father and to accomplish God's plan, just like the Son did, whether we want to in the flesh or not. When we're confronted by that empty tomb, by, by the suffering on the cross that put, him, put Jesus in the tomb in the first place, we get some perspective there, or I hope we do. And so this season then also, um, this remembering what happened at Passover many years ago and, and what so many people today you know, call Easter, um, can help us just reconnect again to, to what is central about what God is trying to do. The result, what was Jesus doing on the cross? What was the point, the, the end goal of what Jesus did on the cross? Restoration, right. God wants to get us back into family. Salvation, you know, we can live forever, forever. And that's what he's trying to do. So, so COVID, uh, you know, what's the deal? Um, what's the connection? We're, we're looking for God's deliverance. Um, consider Esther, for instance. Um, well, chapter 3 in particular. Uh, in chapter 3 of, of Esther, we're not going to read it now, but in chapter 3 of Esther, there is revealed for us this plan that Haman comes up with. So when you read the text, you see that Haman spends one whole year what's called throwing stones or whatever, I guess, trying to read the signs to find a date to fulfill this plan he has to destroy not just Mordecai, but everybody who belongs to him. Haman is so rage-filled that he doesn't want to just take out Mordecai. He wants to take out the whole nation within his reach. So he spends a year planning and plotting this. But what happened? So, as we read beyond chapter 3, we see that uh, he did not get his plan executed. He gets executed, right. So, what is so um, fascinating to me is the timing of God's deliverance. When in this timeline did God deliver the people? Or should I rephrase that? Set the plan in motion to deliver the people. If you remember the story, who was a key player to save the Jews? Esther, okay. And where was Esther to be able to do this? At this point, she was in the palace. She had been she had replaced Vashti. So when was she put in the palace relative to when Haman's plan was concocted? Yeah, so when was, uh, what's her name, Esther, put in the palace to be there to deliver the God's people relative to when Haman came up with his plan? Badly asked question, before or after? <laughs> before, yes. <laughs> so, God put things in place ahead of time to be able to deliver his people. The God who sees, Yahweh Yireh, took action ahead of time, right? He saw Haman's plan coming, and he put Esther in place ahead of time. He also, by the way, allowed Mordecai to overhear a plot to kill the king, which also was useful for what comes later, but we're not discussing that here tonight. So, that same God saw COVID coming. And that same God desires to give life. He intends to give life. He intends to bless, to, to give full life. And God's ultimate purpose then is to give us eternal life, not just necessarily a long earthly life. 
And our challenge, therefore, and our privilege to be involved with, and our purposeful life, therefore, is to make decisions at all times that in every possible way can further the purposes of God. That can propel what it is that God wants to do. And this includes decisions we make pertaining to our community interactions, as well as decisions we make concerning the wider community, how we treat each other, how we behave, what we do for the welfare of the wider community. That's what God's showing us, is he's concerned. He has everybody's welfare in mind. Jesus died on the cross for everybody. As we remember this season, this thing that happens roughly 2,000 years ago, we know that it was not just for those of us who are sitting here or for the people we think are important. Jesus died for everybody. So what is it then that's life-giving in this season of COVID? How can we contribute to honor God's big plan to give life both here and then more importantly for the future? This is something to dwell on. Um, you know, God has solutions. God is involved in our walk. God has a, a plan and he's, he has a way of that he wants to execute things through us and in us. God has not left us to die. God has not left us to deal with our problems by ourselves. I thank God. I'm really grateful to know that he is actively involved in our situation, in the whole world's situation. So there's much to be concerned about or, or grumpy about, but there's also much to be thankful for. Uh, life here is not a bed of roses. Well, maybe it is. Life is a bed of roses, but there are lots of thorns. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> what's that? Rhubarb, rhubarb. <laughs> so, um, no matter what happens in this world, no matter COVID, in all of these issues, God is a constant source of goodness and faithfulness and provision and protection and answers and hope and victory and overcoming. That doesn't change just because we have a, this big thing going on. And we can choose, therefore, to focus on what's bugging us and what's so bad and what's so difficult, or we can choose to focus on what is good and, and celebrate what God is doing to rescue and help us along the way and try to work with him and find what it is that our role is in this thing. What is God trying to do? Ultimately, he's trying to save people. What is my role? What is our role in this situation, in this place, to get that message out there? Bill? History of God's people? When you consider the, the history of God's people, when, when the Israelites, Israel or Judah or both, became unfaithful, God allowed plagues, they allowed, allowed terrible countries, sinful countries to overtake them until right. he got their attention. Mm -hmm. And we know sometimes it took uh, two or three generations for those people to finally come to their senses. And I think when we realize that God is in control, the only thing we have to be concerned about ourselves is to make sure we're part of that faithful remnant. There always was in Israel that there was always a few who stayed true to God, even though they may have been suffering with whatever the conflicts were of the world at the time. Uh, to know that there's there's a, there's an eventual victory, and I I think about old Richard Rogers, a former well-known preacher in our brotherhood, who wrote that little book on Revelation. He titled his book Hallelujah Anyway. <laughs> And I think that's the attitude that we need to take instead of feeling so desperate about some things sometimes is to realize that ultimately we have the assurance of salvation. That's, that's primary. Yes, sir. That's paramount. Yes, sir. Thank you. And so that's really where we want to head today is tonight is to, is to end this 
non-COVID lessons series on a, on, a, on a positive, uplifting note. There's a lot to be thankful for. God's involved in this process, right? And we have a, a role to play in that. It's not to say that there aren't difficulties. It's not to say that there's no trauma, that there's no grief, that there's no loss. I'm not saying it's easy necessarily. But we choose where we put our attention, where we focus our energies, and how we allow God to use us in this process. And so we are the key then in any and all circumstances to carry the message that there is eternal hope for all, no matter what's going on here and now. So when it comes down to it, we really don't deserve God's grace and help. We've been selfish and arrogant and mean and whatever as Christians. We struggle. We do these bad things. So we don't deserve the help. But God continues to choose to forgive us and help and rescue and treat us well, even when we don't deserve it. On the other hand, more sort of towards the good news part, if we are faithful, if we're in Christ, and we're trying our best to follow God, and we're battling these fleshly tendencies, these predispositions to disunite, these predispositions to be mean, these predispositions to be selfish. If we fight the flesh, then we might say, in Christ we do deserve God's gracious forgiveness and help and grace. And I'm so thankful for that. As, as Aaron said earlier, <laughs> you, know, he, you know, maybe he's, he needs a lot of God's grace. God's really working on him, right? God needs a lot of patience with him. Well, Probably at different times we can all identify with it. I'm grateful that God has patience with me and is willing to work with me. I, you know, being a 30-something year long Christian, I feel like I should have been a lot further along this mature Christian path at times. I'm grateful that God is patient. And so as we, again, during this, this season, this Passover season, this um, Jesus on the cross and buried and resurrection season, we can look to God's goodness with thankfulness. God does desire to impart life. He desires to walk with us in our messes. Are humans to blame for this virus that's causing so much destruction because we just flaunted the guidelines and messed with animals we were supposed to be leaving alone? Maybe. But we can still look to God for rescue and be thankful for solutions and help. And, and I guess one last aspect to look at. Uh, what about this aspect that other people's bad decisions cause us harm? Let's say it, there is accuracy. This virus exists because people were eating things in an, from animals in an unhygienic circumstance, I mean, set of conditions that released this, what? zoonotic or something thing <laughs> and now we're suffering what what about that um again i'm thankful because not for that but i'm thankful that my sin whatever it is can be forgiven i, I need to bear in mind that i do not sin in isolation whatever i do impacts somebody it's self-righteous to think that that bad decision causing, it's a big deal, of course, around the world, is causing so much harm is, is, is so bad and that my sin is okay. It's not. You know, what I do affects others, I'd certainly put Jesus on the cross. And so I, I want to bear, you know, you keep some perspective here. My sin does harm others, and God chooses to forgive. And thankfully, those around me affected by my sin, they choose to forgive also, and I'm grateful for that. And so... I thank God for forgiveness. I thank God for the cross. I thank God for hope. I thank God for the season, this reminder. And I thank God that he saw what was coming. And he wants to be part of the process to deliver us. After Jesus on the cross, he lived. People need to know that. After death in Christ comes life. We have that message. Let's get that out there faithfully. Thanks, folks. God bless you. Have a good evening. Walk with the Lord.